Starting off with a big one. Tales of Suspense, issue number 39, a specifically a CGC 9.8 that sold this week during the Heritage Auction. We have some big books we're going to talk about from the Heritage Auction tonight, of course. And this is one of them. Big, big record-breaking sale. Um, I, is this the only 9.8? Yes, I believe so. I know there's some 9.6s, but... Chat, let us check. know if this is, yeah. Uh, I have no idea how you get a 9 8 in this. Time um, traveling. Yeah. Yep. It's the only it's the only explanation, right? Yep. Um yeah, it sold that 9 8 sold for eight hundred and forty thousand, which is the highest that this book ever sold in any grade was like two fifty. Wow. And this sold for eight forty. Wow. Yeah, um, money. Uh, fr- uh, what do they call that? Uh, fu- uh, fraud. Uh, what? What do they call that? Um, when you laundering? Got a- laundering. Laundering. Yeah, money laundering. It's a real thing. It's a real thing. I don't know if this is it, but man, spend almost a million dollars, three quarters of a million dollars on this book. I, I mean, so think of it. But think of it. Think of it this way: if you were a, if you were Somebody like I don't know that that had that was worth hundreds of millions of dollars, and this is the only nine eight of this. Yeah, that's would true. You million, would you spend a million dollars on it? Yeah, just bro. like science shirt. This is a one of one and a nine eight. I look at that. I mean, <laughs> I think I, Thorough, I think I would. Thorough said Mr. Pink won that at auction, and when I have a little thing that if I click one of the one of the comments, it'll come up and it'll choose a random cover color and start cycling through it and as soon as i pulled that up he said it the comment says mr pink won that auction as soon as i pulled it up it was it was the pink color i was like again synchronicity man synchronicity oh Oh. guess how many nine sixes 20 five 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 Five. yeah wow cpr one of those i mean (laughs) (laughs) you also have 21 nine fours so i'll do it for 20 bucks okay (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> and we never saw Red Hood again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you did own this, though, what would you do with it? I mean, would you display it? Or would you? I would, I would touch myself every time I pass by it. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas like, Cage this hey, one. <laughs> I'd be FaceTiming everybody. Hey, have you seen my Iron Man? Yes, Joe. <laughs> well, let me show you this angle. <laughs> That's funny. Well, there's some there's some other crazy books that we're going to talk about here in a little bit. But and I pray if I had this book, I would be more of an asshole than I'm already am. It's like, hey, look at the book I got. <laughs> you see my Iron Man, bro? <laughs> That's a nice looking facsimile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving on. Next. A book that we've talked quite a bit about on this channel. Harley Quinn number 37, the Fui Mara, one in fifty. Graded copies are starting to show up on the bay. And this is a rare one that a lot of people want right now. Mm. Yeah. Um, so again, there's very few of these available for sale. Um, but a nine eight did sell this week for six hundred. What? Six hundred. <laughs> Which, well, if you really think about it, so if like raws are like three to four hundred, six hundred is probably not that bad of a price because it's usually like two two and a half x for moderns. Uh, you know, be, between a raw and a CG and a graded nine eight, so six hundred might not be terrible, but. Um, Ooh, that's a that's a pricey for a book that literally just came out like yeah. just barely over a month ago. Yeah, I was gonna say like a month ago. Right. Fuck that. That's Wait, some bullshit, man. Because usually when the graded ones come back, that's when the book kind of dies down, right? And then whatever the raw prices were, nine eights usually sell around that price for modern, right? For new releases, right? So, I mean, those books that you know. Kind of flew under the radar, 
That's weird. And and banger books are going down. And then like this book sells for six hundred dollars. I don't like hey, Igor's giving me shit. He's like, I told you, Brian, this cover is sick, and you said the one in twenty five is the better cover. I think the one in twenty five is the better looking cover, but obviously it's not the better spec cover, man. That's for sure. Jesus. I, I, this one, I I really like this cover. It's just it's so creepy that I like it. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, it's such it, a different like you think of like here recently like all the Harley covers are all these fluffy you know trying to make her look a certain way you know all these Will Jack and all those type of you know covers and stuff like that and this is not that yeah deep down uh, she's a crack she's a crack whore deep down <laughs> <laughs> right I mean that that's I mean. Like the Harley, the Harley they're trying to like let us know that she really is is a chick that hasn't taken a bath since uh, she was at uh, a doctor at Arkham, right? So because she's for the streets, yeah, she's from the streets. <laughs> Zodiac says, "Ex." We joke up. We don't need soap. <laughs> All right, moving on. A really good cage cover. This is uh, cage issue number two, the Bruce Tim one in twenty five. That's badass. Yeah. It is. Um all time high before this week was a CGC nine eight sold for like four hundred. Uh this week a CGC nine eight sold for seven fifty. Yeah, that book oh, wow. ain't never coming down, dude. Like I tried to try to um make a deal with a couple of people for that book and they 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 won't budge. Like that's gonna be a tough book to get, man. Did Mel sell that book? Yeah, I know he had. I know he had one for a while. I tried to get it from Mel. That's a good so book. JC said the Mexican version is better. What what what? It's is foil. The Mexican version. Hey, bro. Is it foil? The Mexican version is foil, right? I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I I don't remember. Mexicans are foily, Vato. That'd be interesting, though. A foil with a white background that would look would it look gray or would it be white? Hopefully, uh -oh. dude, this color cover would look great as another spot foil cover. The white background be matte and all everything else be foil. Um, isn't white oh. foil just silver? Oh, I just said now nah, the words are just in Spanish. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, the, it's a Bruce. You know, Brooklyn House is a Bruce Tim cover. You know that the the Mexican reprint. You know it's not that modern, right? It's the older one, so we can't automatically assume it's just foil. Just yeah. saying, right? Yeah, true. Moving on. Oh, Grim Fairy Tales number sixty-seven. The Chat Zudis Sela Ski Girl limited to seventy-five. Holy cow. <laughs> Elias Chad Zudis, man. You know, I thought he was going to blow up back in 2013, 2014. I had a couple of covers of him, and and uh, um, I remember talking to Trey K about it and stuff. But, like, he's just never uh, very talented, but you, you, he has these one-offs of, of great covers, but nothing really consistent, dude, you know? He has these great con covers, but like you would have thought as talented as this guy that he'd be pumping out like great Marvel variants or DC variants or image variants, but nothing really consistent on this guy, man. Um, I have anyway. never heard of I had never heard of this book ever. Have you guys ever heard of this book? No. Mm -hmm. Oh, I haven't. of course, Joe, mm -hmm. Joe has. Um, um, a CGC 9.8 of this sold this week for $900. Wow. And that's because he's got a better one. He's got one from a, a 2014 Comic-Con, uh, New York Comic-Con. And um, There was one for yeah. that that he had for this that's a different one, too. He had two for this, two ski girls. He, but Oh, he did? Yeah. But would you pay almost a thousand dollars for this? No. Oh, nope. Yeah. Hell no, that shit it. better be autographed like five or six times in the book and shit, dude. <laughs> you know? I would sell it for a thousand if I had it. 
Right, I'm yeah. not the biggest <laughs> fan of of uh, of you know the the nudie covers, but this is a really fucking good cover, man. Like <laughs> that, that chicky homage better come with the book. <laughs> I mean that's that ski suit is uh, not gonna um, help with the cold. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, she's underdressed for sure. Yeah. Hey, why is my ass cold? <laughs> I don't know. Moving on. Oh, I love this book, man. Wolverine Origins, number 28, the second print with the uh, Diodato interior art as the cover. A great, great sp- splash page right here. Um, okay, so you guys know that I've found a ton of books over the years, and I have never, ever found this book. I've never seen ever. it before. I've never right. held this book. Not, not in hand, no. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, Joe, we, I was gonna say, Joe, we talked about this on Long Story Short not mm-hmm. too long ago. Like, maybe a month ago? I sold mm-hmm. this and whatnot uh, a couple times. Get out Back. of here, really? Oh, yeah, man. I, I, Dude, these second prints, as soon as I started seeing um, the second print of Anti-Venom start hitting, I was like, all right, I'm just going to go Get as many as my random prints. Yeah. My random second prints as I can. When they started doing the second print covers, which were the interior splash pages or, you know, interior mm-hmm. art, I was like, all right, I'm just going to buy them all. And original Wolverine Origins had a couple of them. Uh, the X Men books had a couple of them. There were some really good, and that was when X Men during the Hope Run, which was my one of my favorite all time, you know, times during X Men books. It was. Hope and Cable. You had the uh, Uncanny X Force stuff. You had the Psylocke and um, or, uh, Archangel and and you know Deadpool and that Wolverine team. Like that was that was great time for Marvel Comics. Holy shit! It was a great time for comics. Period. Yeah. Good shit. Um, this one, I mean, this one for a long time has was basically kind of like a thirty to forty dollar book. Which is pretty good. I mean, considering there's really nothing else going on other than just you know the, the cool cover. Um, the last like maybe a month ago, they were selling like fifty to seventy, and now it's this is a hundred dollars. This sold for over a hundred um, raw this wow. week. Wow! So it's it's been going up, and it's I think that I think a hundred dollars raw may be the highest it's been in a decade. So, tough book. Moving on next, we have another tough book. A book that uh, we got to get. We're going to tell Matt to update cover price because I don't even think he has this on there. And there's an even tougher book uh, that's a variant for this issue also. This is Metal Gear Solid Sons of Liberty number one, the CGI variant. Um, if this is ugly... Right. Yeah. <laughs> this is like CGI when it was still like in like um, MySpace, de- you know, time frame. Right. Yeah. Microsoft uh, Paint. Upgrade. Yeah. This is really bad. Um, yeah, it's not this good. does not look like the uh, the CGI that we see now. It's um, foil though, too. Is it foil? It's like puffy foil. Puffy foil. Yeah. Snake. Like yeah. puffy, like PD puffy. <laughs> <laughs> we are not going down that road tonight. <laughs> ow! Ow! <laughs> um, this one sold for three hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, this is this is a tough to find book. It was like a year ago. This sold for like twenty five bucks. So, um, somebody is uh, way, way, way uh, ahead of the game. On this Check one. this one out. So this is a rare, but there's an even more rare one by Ashley Wood. Shout out to Recalled Comics. Metal oh, Gear Solid that. Sons of Liberty Ashley Wood sketch variant. It's a ghost. Yeah. That's super rare. It's an incentive. So be on the lookout for that one too. <laughs> All right. Next. Oh, one of my all-time faves. Johnny the Homicidal Maniac. This is issue number one. 20 printings of this book. Yep. 20, 20 print- printings. And you can't tell it all unless you open the front cover. Yep. 
<laughs> yeah. And there's also a special one that they did that signed, and they only did like 800 of them, and I think it might have like a thicker cover, thicker cardstock cover or something that they did at the time of the the original issue, I th- think. But um, they're all signed on the inside cover, too. This is such a great book. Old school slave yeah. labor graph, uh, graphics. I love, like, just like the old school IDW logo you saw on that Metal Gear Solid. This SLG logo is a great logo to see in back issue bins. So, this, uh, Johan this was a, a game changer, man. When yep. this book came out, dude, like, um, Johan Vasquez is like, he did that Cartoon Network, um, Invader Zim. Yeah, Invader Zim. Squee. Like, Squee. Goth Girl. Or is it, what was that little Goth Girl? Something like that. Yeah, I mean, there's I feel still sick. Like, some hidden gems out there from, from Slave Labor comic, low print run, great artwork. Yep. I mean. No, man. Now I have to go collect 20 printings of a book that I've never heard of. Damn it. Dude, I've got, <laughs> I've, I've got the first print. I've got, like, is six and then it goes all the way to like the 14 15 16 20 17 i don't i don't have 20, uh, yeah. 20th i don't have the 20th printing yeah even the second third fourth fifth sixth prints get some some decent money oh yeah if they're, because they're usually just trashed so if you get any of these in high grade i don't think that there was a book that i ever remember seeing that you knew it was an independent book and but you saw it everywhere record stores bookstores like this book was everywhere in the phoenix area during this time it was crazy it it was so different and just the the title alone just kind of like you know just creep people out man and just the big bug guys like tim burton style you know yeah. um yeah so this doesn't come up often in high grade um, the last CGC 9.8 sold last September for 560, but then it sold this week for 750. So it's up $200 from September. Yeah, this was. <laughs> e- e- emos loved it. <laughs> yeah, emos loved it. Hell yeah, man. Goth kids love that shit. <laughs> Does anybody, do, do, is anybody have all printings of this? No. That'd I would be, love to see that. That'd be hard to do. I mean, I did a killing joke, which was 14 prints, so it's six more. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Except for that's a common book. This one is not. <laughs> yeah, let's go still. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it. So here we go. Moving on next, we have a weird one. I love this. This is why I love Stein. This is New Wavy Gravy, a, an old school obscure punk fanzine. Um,. And this one's special because it's got a story written by Henry Walt Rollins about groupies, I think. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Oh, is it? Oh, it's an actual SST publishing, too, huh? Yeah. Which is so. If you don't know, that's the record label for for Black Black Flag, which yeah. Henry Rollins was a singer for. Black Flag. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I've kept seeing stuff about Black Flag, but I I initially thought it was like the Black Flag comics thing that was like <laughs> no no. And I was it, like, hold on, that can't be. This is eighty five. No, yeah, it's the band that rose above that. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know what this actually is. It says it's a limited. Uh, from what I could find, is limited to five hundred copies. Um. But this is sold a few times, and it's been pretty expensive. Like the last sale was two hundred twenty-five dollars. Um, it sold this week for three hundred. So I guess some people out there know that this is, um, I guess, sought after. Oh yeah, dude, uh-huh. big it's time. It's a punk collectible. Yeah, like like they also did so- multiple other versions, or, uh, other issues of this. There's like a new wave, wavy gravy two, and a couple other ones. Yeah, so I mean, it's like a it's a DIY magazine, right? So like, you know, people that are into, you know, creating their own magazines, that's what they do. And they, you know, they'll um, I've seen it before. You know, I've had friends that create their own zines where they spend all night, like, you know, doing all the layouts and then going to 
Kinkos. Kinkos or whatever, and then printing out and then stapling all their books together. Now uh, they're just comics like, creators that do it. No more punk yeah. scenes. Just Kinkos comics. Yeah. I mean, like, I I was on a zine fest uh, in Houston's email list. Like, I have a pile of zines that, like, my friends made over the years. I always show them on the, whenever I do the market report, um, it's, uh, I'm always talking about these punk scenes. They sell for a grip. So. Yeah. But this one's special, right? This one's got that uh, uh, special story. With Henry, Henry Rollins, Rollins like hated his fans. Henry Rollins a character, man. He's a weird well, dude, and he even admits well, it. Yeah, because he was a fan of the band. Uh-huh. Like he was going to all the shows, and then they cycle through so many band uh, band members. Singer. Yeah. Like my favorite's the original lineup uh, of Black Flag, which was basically what became Circle Jerks. Let's see here. All right, good shit, man. Fucking A. All right, here we go. Next. We've talked about these before uh, a lot. Todd McFarlane's Spawn hardcover volumes that were released to family and friends only. Uh, Sorry, family and um, employees only Uh, back in the day. They did quite a few volumes of this. As a matter of fact, shout out to Spawn World. Um, where you can see they, they did like eight volumes and then they did all of the curse and then the, all the mini series and each volume has 12 issues. So, and they're like, uh, like leather bound, you know, they're really, really fucking nice. So very, very cool book to have. And this is four volumes that sold. Yeah. Are they this nice? Um, yeah, volumes one, two, three, four. So for seven thousand five hundred dollars. Wow. wow. I don't know if they're that nice. I want. I wonder how many there are. I mean, they're super rare. They're only. I wonder if there's any signed just T McFarlane. They're all signed on the inside too. Like no, I was just making a joke. Instead of saying <laughs> having Todd spelled out fully. <laughs> yeah. See, um, let's see here. It says, "This is an extremely rare hardbound collection that was never offered for sale. It was produced within McFarland's company solely to give out to family and employees." So, one has a smudged spawn icon on page two. Yeah, the same thing, isn't it? Right, that that, that they all have, or is that from it? From issue one. Yeah. The like same a, variations that appear in the standard issues of Spawn 1. So he must have used all the smudged versions in these instead of putting them in comics. Because it happened, you know. So that's pretty cool. Hmm. I didn't know that. It's interesting. But that's a lot of money, and McFarlane fans are crazy. They are uh, they'll spend money on shit like this. So, Doc Joe, did you buy it? <laughs> Next, a really cool Uncanny X Force variant by the great Stephen Platt. This is a one in fifty of issue number twenty-five. The time period I was just talking about. Great, great stories in these Uncanny X Force teams. Good shit. <clears throat> um yeah this this had been about an 80 to 100 dollar book which is i mean considering it's 12 years old and you know is probably kind of low cuz it's probably not something that comes up often um but when it did come up it was about 80 to 100 this week it's 04 140 so it's much higher now than it was wow cool book isn't isn't platt doing a lot of cons now yeah he's and he's doing amazing sketches Mm -hmm. like just next level shit how many what i mean like when he was off like was he like literally just doing nothing or was he doing like video game art or something like that no he Um, was in the movie and i thought he was in the movie industry oh movie industry okay i'm thinking of uh, joe maguera 
because they both took breaks. Maguire went to the video game industry, and Platt went to the movie industry. Okay. They they went to real jobs that paid the bills. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's for sure. So, cool book. All right, next. How much did this sell for one, again one more time? 140. 140. 140. All right, moving on. This is a sick book right here. I have n- I never seen this book. If I have, I don't remember it. This is from 2015, The Punisher issue 14, the special ESPN in National Championship variant. Yeah, so, I mean, if you kind of remember back, they did these with a bunch of books. Like, there are all these silhouettes of, I think there was Ant-Man, and, I mean, there was a whole bunch of them. Um, And I think most of them sell for, like, two bucks. I mean, like, nobody even, like, literally cares about them at all. Um, It's a one in ten. This sold for $160 for all this week. Wow. Yeah. Wow, and I've probably literally passed. I've probably passed this one over because all these, they just none of them sell for anything. I've never seen this, dude. Mm. So, so what's happening with the Punisher symbol now? Nowadays, I'm just joking. <laughs> I don't know, and the fact that ESPN put their name on this one, yeah, yeah, it's probably <laughs> probably a big deal. Like they wouldn't probably do that now. Yeah. Well, because they're Disney owned, right? Or partial owned. Yep. Yep. All right. And then Gwenpool Strikes Back issue number one, the Amanda Connor one in fifty had a great sale this week. I did see this. I the the Gwenpool books, especially the issue ones for all the Gwenpool books, have so many great covers. All the covers are great for almost every Gwenpool book, I feel like. Yeah. I don't um, disagree with that statement. Yeah, and I don't like Amanda Connor stuff. Like most of the time, looks good, but it's always there's something strange about it. Like, do, does that make sense? Like, I think she does a good, really good job, but it's like there's something. I don't mind cartoonish character drawings. I mean, because obviously I like Bruce Tim and Darwin Cook and stuff like that. But hers just has a different look sometimes. That it's uh-huh. like, like, do you know what I'm saying? Yes, I do know what you're saying. Yeah, it's really hard to explain. But well, this one doesn't look like that. I think Wait, we're so used it? to seeing Amanda Connor stuff on Harley and Power Girl, you know now, um, and the Pro, I guess. So maybe that she's doing a you know a Marvel book. It's kind of weird to us. Well, is it? Is it when she's working with uh, what's his name, uh, Jimmy Palmiotti? Her husband. Yeah. yeah. It, could it be that situation when they're an working anchor, together? Yeah, an inker artist type thing. You know, for Amanda, for Amanda Connor, that that the the Gwenpool cover is kind of like just, eh. You know what I mean? Like these artists, like the, you know, they think their name alone uh, should just be enough. You know, like I don't know to about me, it if that, Amanda that, Connor feels that way. I, I think Amanda Connor's super cool. I well, you know, I I think she could have done a better cover. You don't like this? It's okay. I mean, it's just okay for one in fifty, dude. Like, bro, the the I, covers on this on these. I don't want to so make good. you mad, dude. This ain't Mark Brooks, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I'm just kidding. I I just. <laughs> it's Amanda related to John Connor. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back, Bennett. Right. She's the grandmother. How much did this sell for? Um, this one sold for one sixty. Wow! See? Hell nah! Uh-uh-uh. Wow! Get your money back, dude. Get your money back. What? <sighs> I mean, I mean, long short may be the one to buy it. I don't know. <laughs> you see, oh, you, you know what? He, he, he agrees. <laughs> Yeah, jo- Doc Joe agrees. <laughs> I don't know. I just you would think a a, a one in fifty would just would, would mean, long short just... catch when long short catches us on the rewind if he's not watching live right now. You know, 
He'll let us know in the Instagram post what he thinks. I mean, I could be wrong. I mean, like, this could be one of those books in, like, five years. Yeah, it is great. You know what I mean? Like, that's just my opinion right now. I'm allowed to change it. I mean, I think, uh, and again, it it goes kind of, like, with what I'm saying about Amanda Connor in general. Like, some of her Harley covers and stuff, I'm like, that just looks weird. This one doesn't look weird. I think this is one of her better covers. I I, I kind of like it. Yeah. Okay. For uh, for her, for Amanda Connor, I don't like I said, I don't think she's bad. I just think that she like they just have a weird look to them for some reason and I their can't, eyes I just is can't it their eyes. It. Is how she draws eyes, yeah. Very cartoony. That'd be funny if Brian had her on the show. What's wrong, Amanda? She's coming on <laughs> right now, bro. Are you okay? <laughs> she's in Are the backstage. Okay? Yeah, we're going to bring her up. It just seems a Surprise. little it just seem a little <laughs> off. <laughs> Yeah, Man, these people, these these artists would crucify me if they ever were on the same show. <laughs> They'd be like, "Man, I got, I got Ben. Up. He wants to ask you some questions, <laughs> idiot." This is why you don't go to comic conventions. I get it. Now. Exactly. Yeah. They, I, I don't I want to talk to that guy. <laughs> I would avoid the uh, the artist alley for sure. <laughs> he hates. Oh, no, you're on that show, aren't you? <laughs> you're on that show. Nothing's wrong with me, Ben. Okay. <laughs> God damn it. Stein's going to start getting banned from from, uh, cons now.